All right, so welcome back. And this is question 557, and it's called Reverse Words in a String, Part 3. And so in this question, we're given a string as our input here, and we want to take it word for word and reverse them. And so that means that we're taking, say, the word take, and we just reverse it. And we take the word leak code, and we reverse it. And we're just not doing the entirety of the string reversing it, but we're just reversing it word for word. And you also have to take note we are keeping this white space here, and so you'll, you'll have to maintain that as you're reversing it. So to do this, we're actually going to make use of a lot of different string uh, methods, so like splitting the string and trimming the string, as well as something called the string builder, which is just something that you can use to when you're doing a lot of concatenations in a, in a loop or like iteratively, you can get a lot of performance benefit using something called String Builder. So definitely worth looking up. It's talked a lot about in the Cracking Coding interview book. If you have that, you can take a look. I think it's in some of the back pages. There's some definitions on it, but a lot of different questions and solutions using it. So yeah, great question to practice with. So let's go ahead and do it. So we'll make use of that string builder and we'll just call it string builder. Great, now I'll just expand this. Oh. There we go. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that string and we'll want to actually split it across the white space here. So what we can do is if we do this s dot split and we're splitting across the white space, this will actually return in a string array and it's going to be an array of strings of these words. So the array at index, the value at index zero will be let's the value at index two will be take, and the value at index three will be leak code. And so we'll just call this uh, words. And so, you know, word zero, word one, word three are these respective words. And so now, with our array of strings, we're going to actually take them word for word and reverse them. And so we'll need a double for loop or a, a nested for loop in this case. So set this one equal to zero. And while it's i is less than the number of words in our sentence here or string. So words dot length. And we're just iterating by one each iteration. So this is just iterating through our array of words. And so inside this, we want another loop and I'll just copy this over just for time and we're going to be using the letter J in this case and do it here however a couple things are different so we will want to get our the character so now we're going to be looking at each word but by character by character and so this would be words at index i since we're iterating through the list of words and so we'll want to actually start with the last letter in our word and so this would actually be at j is equal to words at i dot length and because it's a string you actually have to add these parentheses but when it's an array you don't and then you do minus one because say if an array or a string has a length eight, then we would want, well, since it starts at zero and there's only eight words, then actually the last word is in the seventh location. So we want this minus one. And then we will be decrementing by one each time since we're going from the end of the word and backwards. And then we would also want this j is less than, or no, while well, j is uh, greater than or equal to zero. 
So that will be this edge case where it reaches the end of the string. Great, and so let's just delete that. And let's see here. What we want to do is use our string builder. So do string builder dot append this value here. But it will be the character at j. Great. And so now we'll want to append this white space. So after each word, so this is for each word, we're going backwards. We want to, after that word, then append this white space. Great, and so now at the very end, we'll want to return our string builder. But since we can't return string builder here, we're returning string, we'll want to do a call our two string method. But then this is actually an, an edge case that I ran into that I didn't think of initially. Because we're doing this space after every single word, we would actually be adding an additional white space here. So after this word, would have space and then this comma. And so we're kind of given an extra white space at the very end. And so if we call this dot trim method, it takes all the white space outside of our words and trims it in, but still keeps these spaces in the middle of the words. So definitely worth looking up. This trim method, split method, and the string builder, super useful uh, methods and classes to be using. So let's go ahead and run this, see if we have any bugs. And of course we do, we just need a semicolon here, I believe. Accepted, let's try submitting it. Great, and success. So it's not you know, the, the most practical algorithm um, or most performant. Uh, the solutions that are better than this are a little more complex. I think you can learn a lot by using these string methods and string builders for this question. So I think this is a good enough solution for it. And um, let's see here. What else do I want to say? But yeah, like I, I think the other methods that are just saying character by character, it's probably double the amount of code. So I think you, you learn enough lessons from this question doing it this way that I think it would be good in an interview if you can show that you know how to use these methods and manipulate the strings and to use string builder. So I, th I think it's a very good answer. So yeah. Oh, and the other thing that you want to take note is that although we have a for loop here, it's not n squared because we're just looking at it's, it's, it is a O of n where n is the length of the string. And although we have two loops here, it's really the length of the string. So yeah, I hope that explained things and good luck with the rest of your algorithms. Thank you.